So Bitcoin's big movement early this morning uh, was potentially right was potentially in some minds slightly slightly overshadowed by another pretty high cap cryptocurrency. And it's one that you don't really typically expect to put in gains like 9% uh, in a course of 24 hours. And that, of course, is XRP, Ripple, right? So, yeah, uh, yes, I hear the booze. I hear the booze. I get it. But we, we got to cover it, right? We've got to cover it. All right. Now, taking a look at what could possibly be behind the movement, uh, our research likely indicates that the biggest contributing factor uh, is going to be coming out of Japan. Uh, with the country's second largest bank, uh, the Sumitomo Mitsui Financial Group, uh, or just, you know, SM, uh, SMFG, uh, announcing that they've taken a stake in SBI Holdings. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, SBI Holdings is kind of a big deal in order to bring digital banking services to users, uh, mainly focusing on mobile users, which, of course, as we've covered, Asian markets have a, um, a I mean, a, a very higher proportion of individuals utilizing online banking services as opposed to the United States or other countries. They're the leading in online banking uh, via mobile device. Now, SBI Holdings is a longtime major Ripple partner in Japan, right? It's one. It was uh, one of their Series C investors in uh, in Ripple's uh, um, uh, funding rounds. Now, the speculation currently is fairly rife that this collaboration. Uh, between Japanese bank and SBI Holdings is going to see the utilization of XRP and SMFG's future digital banking offerings, but they have not confirmed anything as of yet. Now, meanwhile, SBI Holdings also announced earlier today a dividend distribution plan to be paid out in ZERP to their shareholders. Okay. Now, SMFG is actually acquiring a 20% stake in SBI's new operation called Neo Mobile Services, right? And that's a brokerage unit of SBI that is going to be entirely focused on the mobile device space, right? The mobile device uh, accessing this, this uh, banking functionality and brokerage functionality with your mobile device, right? Now, SMFG currently lacks any kind of significant online or mobile presence, right? They're a brick and mortar kind of institution, traditional institution, B2B, B2B institution. But SBI wants to add brick and mortar operations to them, to their operations, to give their customers face-to-face -face services as part of their the desired product lineup, right? Therefore, this move is pretty mutually beneficial to these two institutions that move so much money. Now, this deal is going to combine uh, to, uh, or the entire actually nationwide network, the, the entire physical branch network of SMFG with SBI's presence in online trading. SBI has a large, large presence in online trading as a brokerage, right? It is expected that, I, you know, I think this is probably going to help both institutions create both products and services that, you know, individuals of my generation or your generation uh, are going to really enjoy or utilize whether or not they enjoy them, right? Uh, so you enjoy trading when you make money and you do not enjoy money when you lose it, right? Now, the two firms are going to be focusing on the development of a 100 uh, billion won, that's, uh, excuse me, yen, that's $930 million fund uh, in American dollars to be invested in companies that want to work with digital technologies. And that includes fintech companies, blockchain companies, and 5G networks. What's that? Boiling skin? Looking at the Japanese markets. Now, what's interesting is that they were apparently very welcoming of this information news, right? SBI holding stock is up 4% uh, at, at as current time of reporting, while the, the entire Nikea index was largely fat, flat, meaning that it wasn't just moving up with the rest of the index. It was actually moving up uh, on its own accord, right? Now, along with SBI holdings, announcement of the shareholder benefits plan, uh, the, the shareholder benefits plan that SBI announced, Japanese investors are pretty excited to hold SBI stock with details being released today, how shareholders of SBI stock will be able to receive this benefit payout by using a coupon code that will unlock these XRP tokens, this whole XRP dividend distribution program that we talking about earlier. Now, altogether, between the shareholder benefits that SBI is offering being paid out in XRP together with their, their focus on digital finance going forward and their partnership with SMFG. Uh, this kind of provides us some insight into what this company's future is going to be, what SBI Holdings is going to be focusing on as innovating. And they're going to be innovating in the direction of the latest in cryptocurrency or blockchain or digital trends, right? So strongly moving in this direction, right? Now, crypto markets apparently took this all as very bullish news as well. And this saw XRP, Ripple's native token, uh, blowing through some pretty... Um, it levels. I mean, XRP's you know price has not been very very exciting to watch, but blowing past twenty cents, which you know some 
support and resistance analysts say was an important level. No such levels generally aren't really important unless they're predicated by volume, but I digress, right? Now, Ripple's currently trading at about 22 cents, or at least it was as of this morning. And it's coming off of eight consecutive daily green candles. And even with a pullback expected from current levels, which of course is going to happen, brought on by XR by, by BTC's movement, things are overall, I would say, looking positive in Ripple. Unless, again, you want to be contrary and assume this as a kind of buy the rumor, sell the news event, which is almost, you know, kind of exactly what's going on. The rumor's been going on for seven days. But this was announced. This has been a known known, right? This has been a known known. Uh, but Not super. Listen, I want to take this moment to, I just want to take this moment that my feelings about XRP are known, right? However, right, I'll talk about it as just plain blank, how the industry treats the token, how the industry treats it, and anything is obviously a tradable asset, right? XRP, you know, it, I trade XRP. Everybody trades XRP. It doesn't really matter how you feel about it. And also, you know, we talk about fintech and blockchain and all this stuff a lot. Uh, I mean, we just recently talked about... Um. Uh, this is, you know, listen, listen, this is a kind of a good, uh, this is kind of a good, good segue, right? Because I wanted to talk about this earlier, right? And this doesn't really have anything to do with this XRP story, but, uh, you know, I generally don't respond. Well, that's not true. I always respond to my comments, right? But I usually don't respond like on the show. But, you know, recently we did a video about uh, Bill Gates and... Not really Bill Gates, though. We did the Bill Gates story, but the story about Microsoft developing these body sensor blockchain, right? And I got a pretty overwhelming, I got a, well, I don't know, I got an overwhelmingly positive response from everybody for the video, but, you know, some individuals were saying that, you know, I was missing the point uh, and this is absolutely evil and going to lead to the destruction of everything, right? Uh, and while that may or may not be true, I do want to say that my default philosophy on these things is not very doom and gloom. I'm a very positive individual. Um, I don't believe that technology, because it's not, technology is neither is not moral, right? Um, the laws of physics are not moral, right? The laws of chemistry are not moral, right? Um, this computer that is broadcasting this stream to you is not moral, right? Morality only exists in the minds and perceptions of individuals that utilize them, right? Uh, and this is why we argue and sometimes go to war over what the best philosophical or mental models are of society or economics or freedom or liberty, etc., etc. Now, I believe that by the dent of being conscious and alive, human beings are endowed with certain inalienable rights, uh, which is uh, generally the right to be free, the right to do as you will if you're not harming anybody else, the right to pursue happiness, uh, and the general, you know, if I didn't cover this already, the general um, sanctitude, the general value of your own life as it exists, right? While I do not believe that individuals are entitled to anything by dent of them drawing breath, you are entitled to pursue your own life and your survival and you and you're not uh, nobody has the right to endanger your life or your pursuit for survival or prosperity um whatsoever, right? And our entire movement forward as a society technologically is to get to a point where we can transcend barbarity, right? Where we can transcend barbarity, right? Um, and I think every kind of technological leap and boundary helps get us there. Now, although we are in a very interesting point in time where the technology that we've created, which by the way, is not moral. Remember, technological innovations are not moral, right? The intention or purposes uh, behind funding the development for certain technolo technologies can be moral in nature, right? Individuals can have malicious intents when they set out to design a technology, but the invention itself is not moral. The invention, the technology, can be used for good or for ill relative to what you believe good or ill is. Now, in general, I think that morality is actually pretty simple. Human beings know at a default level what is good and what is bad. And if you don't know what is good or what is bad, Largely, that is a fault of your upbringing. Uh, perhaps one is broken, but you can pretty easily see. <laughs> you can pretty easily see. Uh, uh, everybody knows, like at a default level, like what is good and what is ill, right? Uh, and so, I think that often we can get far too complicated when we talk about what is good and what is bad. So, without getting off too too much into the weeds, right? The idea 
uh, particularly speaking about those body sensor things, right? Certainly, right? Because the the assertion that they're going to be utilized to insert vaccines in individuals and that they're going to track and monitor and be used by a totalitarian government, it, they can be. Yes, that technology could certainly be utilized toward that toward that goal or toward that aim. And it's our job, it's our job as participants of this agreement that we have in a society to push against that, to be aware and to fight very firmly anybody who would attempt to incorporate that type of totalitarianism upon us unwillingly, right? That is our entire purpose for doing a show like this, for speaking to each other on the internet, for coming together as a community, for sharing our thoughts and ideas and promoting prosperity and freedom is so that we can be aware and avoid those situations. However, coming down on a technological innovation that generates energy via body motion, I think is silly because that technology can be used for good. So if you walked into your job and your boss said, hey, what's up, man? Welcome to your job. How you doing? Very nice to meet you. Uh, we do have this pretty cool program right here where if you put on this little vest while you work, it generates electricity uh, and blockchain data helps us verify data for our company's shipping and tracking blockchain. Uh, and if you do that, I mean, you don't have to, it's not required, but if you put this vest on, just moving around the office generates blockchain confirmation. And as a reward for doing that, we put a little bit of extra money into your paycheck. That, I don't care who you are, that is a cool technological innovation. And you're lying if you're saying that, hey, for 50 bucks a week, I'm gonna put that vest on. Now, equally as cool as that innovation is, that technology can certainly be used in the hands of a totalitarian government to do whatever ill purposes you want. Insert malicious vaccines into your body or track your data for law enforcement to track political dissent. But having said that, I wanted to say that techno technology is neither good nor evil. It is human beings at the end of the day who are the only conscious entities who are observing the action to give a moral judgment thereof. And personally, I think that the idea of tracking motion via body sensors is actually pretty cool. Everybody uses that uh, pretty much every day, gamers with VR, and it's a fantastic innovation. And that kind of, that kind of data, that kind of technological process will be necessary moving forward. It is our job to fight against the misapplication of those technologies by communicating like this. So I appreciate the comments and I appreciate you guys communicating like that, but put your efforts toward the right method. Uh, put your efforts forward in the right way of doing everything that you can to educate. Remember, this is the kind of order of being able to influence the universe, right? You have ideas in your head, you have desires of how you want to make the world be, but you can't just let them sit in your head. You have to get them out. But if you just run out and scream into YouTube comment section or on Reddit or Discord or Twitter, you're not going to accomplish anything. You have to start by, as difficult as it is, you have to start by first making yourself presentable and on point so that anybody listening to you will respect you enough to believe your message and hear your message. Secondly, you need to organize your life so that your friends and family and local circle are all moving you toward executing your agenda, right? If you are a square cog in a round wheel and everybody around you, including your family, including your friends and your job is all antithetical to where you are trying to move forward in life, you need to fundamentally change the way that you're living or you are going to go to the grave fundamentally unhappy. You need to be brave. This is your only one life. You only get one chance to live life, right? In fact, the universe might only get one chance to be in this interesting state of like low entropy to high entropy where actually fun existing things can exist like waterfalls and heartbeats and kisses and all kinds of cool things. So definitely embrace your one life and make it as awesome as you can. So start by improving yourself, then improve your friends and family or your, or your choice of friends and family, then try to improve your local community, and then you can actually influence the world. By the way, this is the same track record that most, uh, that these politicians and large influencers that most people just kind of like, uh, all these evil dudes over here, this and that, this is the same track record they, that they follow. They get their, and now they have actually political and national influence, right? Their decisions, their words, their actions move nations, move wallets, move corporations, move all these, all these things. Because generally, uh, avoiding Miss Mill intent, they start by getting themselves in order, getting their life in order, getting their local uh, actions in order, and then, hey, they run for president, right? And usually they lose because, you know, you got to be like Bilderberger and like, you know, Skull and Bones and all that stuff. But still, you know, even people that run for president and fail now get to go on CNN, make a pretty good living just being like, yeah, 
Don't like that, dude. So, hey, you know, that's always in your future. With that being said, with that being said, what's our next story of the day? Set all out with about XRPF. So, please, let me know your comments in it in the section down below about XRP. Are you guys excited about that? Do you guys think anything big is going to come out of that?